oil prices are rising yet again for a second straight day. Take a look at this chart. The Brent crude price, as you can see here, took a tumble last week as we approached the meeting of the oil producing cartel of the world, OPEC. Um, and it fell yet again when the group said that it would, as expected, not cut back on oil output. But this week, prices have rebounded by around about $3 and they continue to rise in today's session. The market's view on where prices could be heading is changing, though, it seems. The U.S. Energy Information Administration says that there are signs of rising global demand for oil. It says that U.S. oil production is likely to decline. That's because prices have been so low over the course of the past year. But finally, there is a growing risk of supply disruptions in the Middle East and also in North Africa that could counter that. Um, we should get more data on the oil market when OPEC releases its own report later on today. But when it comes to uh, the supply and demand dynamics of oil, they could be shifting, it seems, at least according to that report. Let's get more thoughts on the market as a whole. Majid Jafar is the CEO of the oil producing company Crescent Petroleum. He's in our London studio today. Great to see you as always, um, Majid. Where do you think things are heading at the moment? Because if you listen to that report, they're saying that effectively, you know, when it comes to the supply and demand dynamics, yes, there's a glut of oil on the market, but it'll be mopped up. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that is true. I think you, you're seeing a few different dynamics. Clearly, the Middle East uh, security risks, uh, the explosions in Iraq, the conflict in Yemen, that's causing short-term jitters to the market. But then you have the, the two big external factors, or external to the Middle East. Uh, above all, what happens in, in uh, North American supply is a lot of focus on that. There are two schools of thought. Uh, one, that there's a lot of capital that's been raised and it'll continue to be invested and that more efficiency can, can be uh, obtained. And the other, that actually a lot of the production will be starting to come off, and we're now seeing that. And then the other big one, which uh, wasn't uh, in that list, which is critical in my view, doesn't get enough focus or analysis, is Chinese demand. Yeah. I mean, generally developing uh, the world demand, which is really what's driving oil demand going forward, not the OECD, and China first and foremost. And there was some evidence of demand for oil coming off. What is Chinese real GDP uh, growth? Is it 7% the new normal or is it even less? And even if it is at that level, is it as energy intensive as it once used to be? I think that's going to be the biggest driver for long-term oil prices. Mind you, even if um, the oil price stays low, that's still a good opportunity as we've been investigating on this show uh, over the last couple of weeks for China to stockpile. And that's more or less what they're starting to do, isn't it? So. It's not as if Chinese demand is going to be falling off a cliff anytime soon. Yeah, and when and you know, sixty plus dollars per barrel is actually not low by historical standards. It's low by the standards of the last couple of uh, years. And I think for uh, c producing regions like the Middle East, which has half the world's oil and gas reserves, which is where uh, our companies are, are focused, it's punching below its weight, uh, despite having the lowest uh, cost of uh, production and huge reserves. Of course, we have the conflict, but there are some key policy areas. Energy subsidies is con destroying a lot of value in the region, hundreds of billions of dollars worth, and the lower oil prices gives a real uh, opportunity to tackle them because That's the difference is less for countries like Egypt but also for countries in the, in the GCC and the, the big uh, producers and then the other big challenge we have in the region is tackling our regulatory uh, reform and oil investment laws to improve the prospects for private sector investment in the upstream in the oil and gas space both for foreign companies and for regional private sector companies such as Crescent Petroleum and our listed affiliate Danagas. Well, you're quite present in Iraq, aren't you? And you've been traditionally present in that country for generations. Um, how have you been affected by the fighting over there? Because I think many people have been surprised by how robust the Iraqi oil put output has been despite the troubles that the country has faced. Mm -hmm. So as a group, we've invested over $2 billion in Iraq uh, over the last seven years. Uh, about half of that has been in the oil and gas sector, and particularly the gas uh, part of that in the Kurdistan region, where we're the biggest uh, investor and, and producer. We've been producing gas for six, seven years now, uh, Crescent Petroleum and Dana Gas as joint operators. Uh, but also in other parts of the country, affiliates are invested in the power sector in the center of the country and in the ports and logistics in the south. Overall, of course, the conflict and the security concerns uh, are a big factor. Uh, but behind that also, there are some things that are happening that are critical now for the world oil markets, which is Iraq is looking to amend the type of contracts they've been using to have uh, contracts that better align the investor with the host government. 
uh, and they need that because they can't afford to be paying out to oil companies w under the old service contracts yeah. in addition to fighting uh, the war on ISIS and finally passing the oil law. It seems that the government now has taken that on as a priority and w w you know with the IEA forecasting that half uh, the world's uh, growth in oil exports over the next uh, 15 years is going to come from, from Iraq, it's very important that Iraq gets it right for, for world oil markets as well as its own stability. Ever so briefly, are you worried about refinery capacity as well here? In Iraq itself. Just generally around I mean, the world. Clearly what's happened uh, to, to Beji in Iraq has been uh, you know, devastating for the country. It was very dependent upon that. And generally countries in the Middle East have underinvested in the refining uh, sector. In the U.S. it's a bit of a different picture. The, the refiner, refineries have been mostly built for the heavy oil. And suddenly they have a huge surplus of the condensate, the lighter oil. And this has led to the debates over allowing the U.S. to export its oil. Ashid Jafar, thank you very much for joining us. Always great to have you on the show there, the CEO of Crescent Petroleum.